Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. Today we're going to do something a bit different and take a look at the political compass test. This is a test which asks you a bunch of questions, you respond on a scale of strongly agree to strongly disagree, and then it puts you on a graph where the x-axis represents economic left and economic right, and the y-axis authoritarian and libertarian. We are interested where our audience and where our team would land on the compass. So we asked you to take the test and report back your results, something which 10,725 of you kindly did, so thanks for that. In this video, we're going to explain the political compass, explain where our audience lands, and tell you why some people take some serious umbrage with this test. If you want to be one of the people who takes part in survey videos like this in the future, then make sure you've subscribed to the channel. Subscribing not only means that you're more likely to be told about our videos, but it also means you're going to see our community posts, which is where we share surveys like this. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can share your opinions and make it into future videos. Thanks for your support. Anyway, back to the political compass. If you weren't one of the nearly 11,000 people who took the test for us, you might want to do it now before you continue watching, so that you know where you land, how you compare, and fully understand what the test is like. If you want to, the test is linked in the description. Anyway, the political compass aims to put you on a scale which differentiates between economic and social attitudes, which when it was developed was a big improvement on scales which simply put you somewhere between left and right. On the economic axis, it ranks you from the right, which they label as neoliberalism, the view that the free market should be left alone as much as possible, and the state should try not to intervene unless absolutely necessary, to the polar opposite of the spectrum, which is socialism. This is the belief that the economy should be very strictly regulated by the state. On the social axis, they split people between authoritarian and libertarian. Authoritarianism is the belief that people should be obedient to authority. As you can imagine, liberalism is the opposite, the belief in more individual freedom. An easy way to think about it is whether the state or the individual is more important. If you combine the social and economic scale, you can then find out exactly where you land, differentiating between those who believe in left-wing economic policy and authoritarian social policy, and those who are left-wing economically but support liberal social policies. So let's take a look at the results we got for this all-important compass. Where did we land and where did our audience shake out? Well, 3.08% of respondents landed in the authoritarian left section. 4.97% in the authoritarian right section, 9.6% in the libertarian right section, and, well, you don't need to be great at maths to work out, that leaves the vast majority of respondents in the libertarian left, some 82.36% of respondents. And we actually agree with them too, with Team TLDR members also landing primarily in that area too. Now, before you get in the comments to say that this is evidence of the channel's left-wing bias and left-wing audience, let's take a closer look, because this heat map shows where most people landed within each segment, and it seems like a huge number of people fell into a very thin stripe within the compass. Why could this be? Well, it turns out it might actually be the compass's fault. You see, we didn't actually expect to get reliable results from this experiment we knew most people would fall into this quadrant, and that's because of some fundamental problems with the political compass. There are three main criticisms we can see with the compass, and those are biased questions, non-political questions, and a lack of weighting. Let's run through them briefly to explain why these tests might not be as reliable as you might think. Firstly, biased questions. To consider the quality of the questions, let's dive into the test itself. One of the first questions asks respondents about attitude to abortion. Now, this is understandably a controversial topic, which for the purposes of this test is a good thing, because it should be able to differentiate between respondents. Note the word should there. The question asks whether abortion should always be illegal. This includes situations like rape and incest, something that even the vast majority of pro-lifers would accept to be an exception. So even if you are pro-life, you may find yourself disagreeing with this statement, and thus being moved downwards towards the more libertarian half of the chart. The issues with biased questions don't only affect the social questions either, they also have a tendency to drag respondents to the economic left too. 
Take the very first question as an example. It basically asks whether globalization should benefit people or businesses. The issue being that right-wingers and even neoliberals will generally agree that it can and does benefit both. Asking someone on the right wing whether businesses or humanity should benefit is leading. And it prompts them to say humanity, because if you had to choose, most people, irrespective of left or right, would choose humanity. And as such, it moves them towards the left of the chart. Essentially, this problem is replicated across the test. The political compass tends to pull people towards this quadrant, with a number of questions seemingly designed to push people down into this area. The second criticism is best demonstrated by a question about whether you consider abstract art to be art. While this may indicate whether you're more deferential towards the traditional way of doing things, and perhaps more authoritarian, or if you're accepting of newer artistic styles. The problem is that this is pretty removed from political ideologies. Therefore, some argue that there are definitely more important factors to determine your ideological standpoint. Factors which should be examined rather than asking vague non-political questions, which the test does quite a lot of. Not only are there non-political questions, but they seem to be allocated similar weightings to questions clearly about politics. Take this question about race for an example. We took the test twice and answered all of the questions exactly the same apart from this one. The first time we answered strongly agree, and the second time we chose strongly disagree. This led to a movement of around 0.5 on the authoritarian axis. We did the same for the abstract art question, and it led to almost exactly the same movement. So in effect, any movement on the axis as the result of a very meaningful question, say this one about race, can be counteracted by a less meaningful answer about abstract art. I think we can all agree that this question about race is significantly more telling than the art question. These criticisms build up though, and show that less meaningful questions hide a lot of the answers to meaningful questions, and that even those meaningful ones are worded in a way to point you towards a left-wing preference, ultimately pushing people to the left and specifically to this section. So those are the main criticisms, but let's see if they're demonstrated in the data we've collected. As well as asking where the compass placed our audience, we also asked our audience to rate themselves on a simple left-right scale. Anyone who put 1 to 3 will be considered left identifiers, whereas anyone 5 to 7 is considered on the right. As we mentioned, the test splits this scale into economic and social. So if someone is a left identifier, they could be economically left but socially right, economically right but socially left, or economically and socially left. However, the one place we wouldn't expect them to land on the test is in the economically and socially right section. And this is obviously inverted for right identifiers, who we wouldn't expect to find down here. But what does our data say? Well, only 1.26% of left identifiers ended up in the top right segment. However, a huge 27.36% of right identifiers ended up in the bottom left. That means that either one in four people on the right are actually left-wing and don't know it, or the political compass has misidentified them as left-wing. As we've explained, this misidentification could be down to leading questions, or simply that movement to the right, either socially or economically, has been hidden through vague questions like the one on art. Before anyone brings this up in the comments, the fact that there's a large gap between self-identification and the political compass isn't all that surprising. What is weird is that it's only for those who identify as right-wing, suggesting that it isn't really just about people misidentifying themselves, because if this were true, we'd expect to see a similar-ish proportion of left identifiers being placed in the top right. The political compass may not, therefore, be as good at measuring political positions as you once thought, and it might not actually be that useful at all. If this test is a dud then, we probably shouldn't judge the TLDR audience or the TLDR team based on this data. So how about we use a completely different and hopefully more reliable test and see what that says. If you want to be involved in our next video on this topic about the 8 values test, then click the link in the description, take the test and submit your results. Anyway, what do you think? Did you take the political compass test? And if so, do you agree with the answer it gave you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. 
And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.